Welcome to this Michigan Region 8 training session for the Michigan EMS Data System, or MIEMSYS. Today's session is focused on analytical reporting, how to get data back out of the system after you've put some data in. Here's a quick look at the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to go over how to access the Report Writer, which is the analytical reporting tool in Image Trend Elite. Then we're going to run a, a report that's already been created and designed by someone else. We're going to look at how to take that report as a basis and make modifications to it to make it our own. We'll also then move on to creating our own report from scratch. After that, we're going to look at uh, something called analytical reports and analytical charts. And that will wrap up the session for today. Most of the session will be hands-on actually in the Michigan EMS data system, getting some practice with reports. You're welcome to log in with your own account in MyEMSYS and go to the report writer and follow along and practice as we go. So I'm going to uh, log into the Image Trend Elite system in a second. I'm going to use a test and training account that has access to a demo agency. You, of course, are welcome to use your own uh, Image Trend Elite account. Once I'm logged into the system, I can find the Report Writer through the Tools menu. Click on Tools, and I'll see Report Writer over in the far left. Once the report writer comes up, I'll see that there are a bunch of reports over here in this uh, folder menu structure. In particular, the QAQI folder has a lot of reports in it. So these are reports that have already been built by others and have been shared system-wide or at least shared with you. Uh, you'll see a section at the top here that says My Reports. Any reports that you create and save, they'll show up in the My Reports section. Everything created by other people that are shared with you will be in the Shared Reports section. Down here in the Shared Reports section, the QA, QI folder, uh, we're going to go ahead and run one of these existing reports. I'm going to pick the Dispatch Complaint Report. Another way to find a report that you're looking for is to type it in the box up here at the top. So if I, if I type the word Dispatch, then it will filter down all of the reports to those that contain dispatch in the title. And here I see dispatch complaint as one of those reports. I'm going to click on that report, and it will load it here. This report is ready to run. It's already been designed by someone else. It's asking me to put in a, a filter for what time frame I want to run this report on. Um, but all the design has already been done by someone else. Now, in my testing, I've seen that sometimes these reports will run really, really slow. It'll take several minutes to get results for a fairly simple report. And uh, this report, it's like that. I have found uh, a little tip that helps, which is to modify the criteria in the report. In a few minutes, we're going to really go into how to modify a report. But I want this report to run fairly quickly for us right from the start. And so I'm going to add a, a filter for agency name. This is a, kind of a redundant thing because uh, you only have access to the agencies that you have been given access to. And yet, for whatever reason, the report will run faster if we specifically tell it uh, which agency to run it on, uh, even though that's the only agency you actually have access to anyway. So um, I've just added agency name to the filters as a performance trick. OK, so now we run the report. It's asking for a date range. Uh, it's asking for an agency. So I'm going to pick my one agency that I have access to. And uh, I'm just going to leave the date range blank on this report. So it's just going to give me numbers for all time in my agency. So let's hit Generate Report and uh, wait a minute for this to come up. OK, there's our report that uh, gives us a breakdown of, um, of calls by dispatch complaint and also by the MCA where the call occurred. This is a demo agency, so there's calls that occur all over the state. Uh, but if we look, for example, here um, in the No MCA section, uh, we see a list of 
different dispatch complaints. And over here we see a count, the number of uh, patient care reports that had that dispatch complaint. We could look through the various counties. There's a few in Kent County um, and so on. Uh, in your actual agency, this would be a lot cleaner. Almost all of your reports are in one MCA, and so you would just see that MCA listed with a breakdown by dispatch complaint. Okay, now that we've run this report, we're going to make some modifications to it. What I'd like to do is not only have a count of the number of PCRs, but I also want to know the average response time, how long it took to get to the call, for each of these different dispatch complaints. So in order to include some new piece of information on the report, we're going to need to go to the Columns tab. So I'm going to click on Columns. This gives me a really long list of things that I can include in my analytical report uh, from the patient care report data in my agency. I'm going to add something called average response time that's called a calculated column. So everything on this list is data that um, was uh, attached to each patient care report or data about your agency. Um, for example, um, let's see, let's look at um, units arrived on scene. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of choices here. Uh, and these are specific to each patient care report that is being analyzed in this analytical report. So you'll see there are a bunch here that are intervals. So uh, for example, incident dispatch notified to unit arrived on scene in minutes. So this is a column that will tell you how long it took from the time you were notified by the, to the time you got on scene. and that's for each patient care report. Uh, however, what I'm looking for is since I have a count of PCRs and I actually want an average of how many minutes it took to get to the scene by dispatch complaint. In order to do something like an average, I need to create a calculated column. So I'm going to click Create Column. And you'll see there are different ways to do these uh, summary columns. I'm going to pick Average. I want the average response time. And I'll give it a name. I'll just name it average response time. And then the column that I want to take the average on was incident unit notified by dispatch to unit arrived on scene in minutes. That's the one I'm going to pick that will give me my response time from the time I was dispatched to the time I arrived on scene but it's going to do it as an average across all of the PCRs that shared that dispatch complaint. Okay, so we've got it. The type is average. We've named it, whatever you want to name it, and we've picked the column that we're going to get the average on. Let's click Add. So now my analytical report contains all of the columns that it contained before, plus this new column that I created for average response time. Let's go ahead and generate the report now. All right, I'm going to use the same filter information. And now we'll run the report. So now in addition to having a count of the number of PCRs for each dispatch complaint, I also have the average response time across those PCRs. So for example, for abdominal pain problems, there were two patient care reports that had that dispatch complaint, and the average response time across the two reports was five minutes. So maybe one was three and the other was seven, I would average out to five. Of course, these are very small numbers in my agency for demo purposes. Um, you'd have some pretty realistic numbers from your agency once you have uh, several or many calls that you've gone on that are in the system. I do want to point out with this average that I used, it is sensitive to outliers. Let's say that um, you had a patient care report with uh, a dispatch complaint of abdominal pain or problems. 
And uh, the response time for that report was five minutes. And then you had another report with the same dispatch complaint, but the response time for that other report was like an hour. There was just something, something strange about that report or that, that incident. Well, the average between five minutes and an hour is like 32 and a half minutes. It's a big number. So that one outlier can really skew an average. And um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're analyzing your data. A median is often a better way to go. If you had 10 reports that all had a five minute response time and then you had one that had a two hour response time, your median would still be five minutes because that would be the, the report in the middle of all the reports lined up in order of their response time. So medians can be a nice way to go to not get skewed by uh, that strange, you know, one call that you had that took a really long time. Okay, let's say that I want to save this report. Uh, I, I like the report. I want to be able to come back and use it again. So I can go up to the Actions menu and choose Save As. You'll notice I can't just strictly save the existing report because someone else created it and shared it with me but I can do save as, and I can save it as my own. So I'm gonna call it dispatch complaint uh, with average response time. I can update the description. I can decide which report folder I want to share it, uh, save it in. Then if there were any people that you specifically want to share the report with without sharing it with everyone, then you can search for them down here and you can specifically share the report with other people. For example, maybe someone else in your agency. Okay, so I'll click Save. It has saved my report and now over here I'll see in the My Reports section I have my new report, Dispatch Complaint with Average Response Time, that I just saved. So now I can log out of the system, come back later, and my report is there. All right, next we're going to talk about uh, creating our own transactional report from scratch. When I go to create a transactional report, these are the steps that I go through. Number one, I start with what's the question? What am I trying to answer? What kind of data am I trying to get out? Number two, is there an existing report that answers that question or comes close to it uh, that someone else has created? If so, then I could start with that existing report, make some modifications from there, and then save it as my own. Then steps three through seven, we will practice in the report writer. We will decide what columns to put on our report, how to display that data, how to group it, how to sort it, and any criteria that we want to apply. So let's work on creating our own report, and let's start with what the question is. For today, let's try to build a report that answers the question, how many calls do we go on by day of week? Uh, we want to know, for example, what's the busiest day of the week in our agency? What's the least busy day of the week? Okay, so uh, calls by day of week, that's going to be the question. Number two, we would say, well, is there an existing report that already answers the question? Um, so what we could do is search uh, in Report Writer, Day of Week. We'll see, yeah, there is one created by Image Trend called Runs by Day of Week. So that's one that we could probably start with as our basis. Well, for training today, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to pretend that there is no report that answers our question. And we're just going to start with a brand new report. So to create a report from scratch, I'm going to click Create Report. There are a bunch of different types of transactional reports I can create. These are all based on different data sets within the system. Uh, most of the time, you're going to create reports off of the EMS incidents data set. But if you wanted to create a report about you know, who your personnel are, then you've got a personnel data set. Or uh, where your agency locations are, uh, there's an agency location data set. Uh, but if you're talking about runs that you're going on, EMS calls, it's going to be the EMS incident data set. So I'm going to click on that.
and I'm going to start setting up my report. We're going to start with columns. So what I wanted was runs by day of week. So I probably want to know day of week. So I've searched for that. And, but I don't want just a, a list of, you know, one row for every patient care report listing what day that report happened on. Um, that's what would happen if I click generate report right now. It would have Monday, Tuesday, 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 Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday, et cetera. It would, it would just list a uh, day of week for each patient care report. If I had a thousand patient care reports in my agency, I would get a thousand rows in my report. What we want to do is summarize by day of week. And as you recall, the way to summarize data is by creating a column. So I'm going to click create column. And I want to count patient care reports. So I'll choose count as my uh, type of column. And I can give it a name, like count of PCRs. I can type whatever I want there. And then what is that I want to count? All rows. I just want to count all of my PCRs. So I don't need to do anything about these additional criteria here. I'll click Add. So now I have day of week and count of PCRs. This is going to cause it to be a summary report. So I'm going to get Sunday through Saturday, just those seven rows, one for each day of the week, with a count. Next, I can decide any display options. For example, uh, incident day of week number and name, maybe that Title is kind of long for me. I want to shorten that up so I can do that. Uh, count of PCRs, I could rename that something else if I want. I'm just going to leave it like it is. So I've just done a little bit of reformatting there for display. Next is grouping. I could decide to group my data. Uh, in the earlier report that we ran of calls by dispatch complaint, I had things grouped by MCA. And then within each MCA, I got the, the numbers I was looking for. Um, on this report, I'm not going to group it uh, because I just have this one incident day of week that I'm looking at uh, and then a, a simple count. Next, I can decide how I want to sort my report. I'm going to say that I sort by day of week so that I'll get Sunday at the top and Saturday at the bottom with the other days in order in between. I could instead count by PCRs, and then the day of the week that has the least PCRs would be the one at the top of the report. That's the sorting. Next is criteria. It's usually helpful to set up some criteria um, for my report. If I don't, then I'm going to get reports for, then I'm going to get data for every patient care report that's ever been created in my agency. And sometimes that's what you want, but oftentimes you may be looking, for example, for a time range. Well, there's uh, two ways to set up um, the criteria. One is this criteria section here, and the other is the filter section. Here's the difference between the two. In the criteria section, whatever you set up here becomes essentially part of the design of your report. So, for example, if I say, uh, if I set up a new criterion that says um, incident date is equal to 2018, then no matter when I run this report, it's always going to uh, enforce that criterion of uh, only the calls that happened in 2018. On the other hand, the filters section allows me to set up a prompt that will be shown to me every time I run the report. And at the time that I run the report, I can decide how I want to answer that filter. I'm going to show you uh, both criteria and filters for practice. So we're going to click Add New for criteria. And let's say that I'm not interested in canceled calls. Uh, I'm only interested in calls where we actually responded. Um, so I can pick patient disposition. So I'm going to pick this incident patient disposition to say, uh, is in, and I'm going to pick everything except canceled. I'm not interested in the uh, canceled calls. Okay, so there I've set up a criterion, and 
every time I run the report, this is going to be applied. It's going to exclude my canceled calls. I'm also going to set up a filter, and uh, let's say uh, we want to look at dates. Um, I can say something like incident date and go like that. And you'll notice I haven't told it what the actual uh, filter is for incident date. I've just identified incident date as something I want to filter on when I run the report. Okay, lastly, there are some additional options you can take a look at uh, for your reports. Uh, these are things like headers and footers when you print out the report, um, if you want a custom header or footer, if you want to change the colors, uh, backgrounds, stuff like that. Before I generate the report, I am going to add in criteria um, for my agency, as I mentioned, just to improve performance. Um, so I'm going to set up a filter here on agency name or criterion and just say it's equal to demo agency. It's my only choice. I'll just make the report run faster. Okay, let's hit generate report. Here's my incident date range filter being displayed to me, whereas the disposition criteria is already set up in the report uh, not to be tweaked. Let's say um, incident date is equal to last year. Okay, so this gives me all calls that happened last year. Click generate report and see what we get. Okay, so here's my report. I have the days of the week, Sunday through Saturday. They're sorted uh, because I set up a sort order. It's called day of week because I tweaked how that would be displayed. And then my count of PCRs, which was a column that I created, uh, is listed here uh, on the right-hand side. And so I can see that uh, by far in the demo agency, Wednesday is the busiest day of the week, and Sunday and Friday are the least busy days of the week. If I like this report and I want to be able to use it again later, I can go up to the Actions menu and click Save. and put in a title, a name, and descriptions. I can decide what folder I want the report in, whether or not to share it with everybody in the system, generally no, and then if I want to specifically share it with certain people in the system, I can look them up here. So I'll click Save. And that has saved my report. It's now up in the My Reports section. Under Call Information, I see Day of Week Report. So now I've created my own transactional report. So most of the time when you use Report Writer, you'll probably create transactional reports, and you'll probably create them using the EMS Incidents data set. So that's going to be your link right there to create new reports. However, the system does provide a couple of additional options uh, one is an analytical tabular report, and the other is an analytical chart report. And those can be run off of your EMS incidents data set as well. Next, we're going to demonstrate the analytical tabular report. Before I click on that, let me explain a little bit about how analytical tabular reports work. This is an analytical tabular report. They're also called multidimensional analysis reports. The way these work is they set up a, a data table that's, that has two dimensions to it. It has columns across the top and rows down the side. And you can decide two different things that you want to look at, or more, and how you want to measure them. So you got stuff across the top, stuff down the side, and everything in the middle here you have actual numbers, like counts or averages or things like that. And these are the measures in a multidimensional analysis or analytical tabular report. These are the, the things that you can summarize by counting or averaging or, you know, average patient weight, average height of fall, things like that. 
Okay, on the outside, then you have what are called dimensions. You have columns and you have rows. And these are the ways by which you want to slice and dice the numbers that you're getting. So in this report, I've got unit call sign across the top as one dimension, and I have day of week down the side as a second dimension. So that's what makes this multidimensional, two dimensions. And then I have the measure for each combination of those. So I can look at what's the measure for calls that were run by Ambulance 1 on Monday versus Ambulance 1 on Tuesday or versus Ambulance 2 on Monday, et cetera. So that's how we set up an analytical tabular report. We look at measures, what it is we want to summarize, and dimensions, how we want to slice and dice the data. So let's set up an analytical tabular report. I'll click on this EMS incident link. And this form comes up. It looks quite a bit different than the form that I saw with uh, the tabular reports. You'll notice here that it's showing uh, measures, like I just showed in the previous illustration, rows, and columns. All right, let's set up a report where um, I want to just count stuff. I want to count the number of incidents. So I can see there's something called count of incidents. That's going to be my measure. That's what I'm counting, what I'm measuring. And then um, let's say I want to do it by day of week. This is going to be really similar to that transactional report that I created a few minutes ago, just using a different approach. So let's get incident day of week number and name on my rows. And then for this one, I'm actually going to leave columns blank. So I'm going to just get rows uh, with my measure and my count of incidents. All right, so we've got count of incidents by day of week. Hit generate reports. And now I have my report, day of week down uh, through the rows, and the count of incidents over here on the side. I haven't applied any filters like I did with my transactional report, so my numbers are a little different here. But uh, it still remains the case that Wednesday is uh, the most popular day in my agency. Uh, of all calls, including canceled calls. Okay, let's say I want to add to this. I like having day of week down the side, but I would like to add something to the columns across the top to truly make this multidimensional. I gotta go down to where it says basic options to get back to my design. And I'm gonna add something to columns. Uh, I'm gonna use patient age range in years. So what I'm interested in is how many calls have I gone on by day of week, but also by the age of the patient uh, put into kind of ranges. So let's click generate report again. All right, so now I have my days of week down the side in the rows like I had before, but now I have these columns across the top for patient age ranges, starting from less than one, one to nine, et cetera, up to 100 through 120, and then anywhere the patient age was not reported. So now I can see, for example, um, Wednesday, the, my, my busiest day uh, is also busiest for the 40 to 49 age range. That's when a lot of those uh, calls are happening. But with uh, less than one year old, Thursday was the day that had the most infants or babies. So there I've got two dimensions on my report and I'm counting the, the measure. Lastly, I'd like to demonstrate how to create an analytical chart. This will actually give you something visual. Before I do that, of course, I could save my uh, analytical tabular report using the save option so I could come back to it later. Okay, let's go back to create a report and choose to create an analytical chart report using the EMS incident data set. The first uh, thing I need to do is tell it what kind of chart I want to build. Uh, there's different chart options, uh, columns, bars, um, pie charts, line charts, etc. I'm gonna go with a column chart. 
So this is going to show me a series of columns that uh, are, are counting or measuring something. So column. And once I've selected that it's a column chart, then it gives me some questions here to answer. We're going to make the same kind of chart here where we do runs by day of week. So what is it we want to um, measure? Well, we want to measure a count of incidents. Just a simple how many calls did we have. And then the x-axis categories, that's how we want to split up what it is that we're measuring. Well, we want day of week. We want to know runs by day of week. So I'll look for day of week and pick incident day of week, number, and name. If I try to run the report now, it's going to give me an error. It's going to tell me that this one, column names, has not been filled out. We don't need to use column names for this particular simple chart that we're doing, and yet it's forcing us to do something. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say um, agency name. Uh, I know that all of my calls only happen in one agency, so um, I'm still going to get just one set of columns here uh, that's just for my agency. Uh, but since it forces me to choose something, uh, that's what I'm choosing. I'll click Generate Report, and we'll wait for it to build the chart. All right, so here's my chart. Uh, rather than getting numbers on the screen, I'm getting the, these columns and can visually see that Wednesday is my busiest day, uh, not including all the calls that had no unit notified date because this is test data in a, in a training or demo agency. So this can be a nice way to visualize the trend. And also, it can be a nice way to share this data with others. If I go to the Actions menu, uh, I will see several export options. Uh, I can export this as a JPEG or PNG, just as a graphic. Um, and I can also export it as a PDF. Uh, so if I do that, then I can take it and, and embed it in, uh, say, a report that I'm writing. I can also download the, the underlying data uh, to a CSV file if I want to bring it up in Excel and make my own chart from there in Excel. So that's how to create an analytical chart report. All right, so uh, best way to really learn uh, all of the stuff here in Report Writer is to just try it out and practice uh, as you go. You'll try to build a report. Uh, it may get close to what you wanted, but not quite. So then you go back to columns or criteria or grouping or whatever to uh, just tweak it until you get the report that's answering exactly the question that you want to answer. Additional general support on using the analytical reporting tools uh, is available through the state of Michigan at support at myemsys.org. Uh, or Kevin Putman, who is the EMS data manager for Michigan. Additionally, ImageTrend provides some general support uh, documents in the ImageTrend University. Uh, you can get to that by going to the Resources menu in ImageTrend Elite and then choosing University. Uh, they also have a support uh, website and support phone number that you can contact. And finally, if you're running into questions about the kind of data that you're collecting and reporting on, um, trying to figure out what data elements you're trying to uh, utilize to build your report. Nemesis.org is the place where the Nemesis data standard is uh, maintained. You can look at the data dictionary there, and it will define uh, all of the data elements that are used in the Nemesis standard that are available to you in the Image Trend Elite Report Writer. That wraps up the training for today. Thank you for your time, and good luck building reports.